When we originally got Hercules and knew that we were going to be shooting four movies, we knew that wherever we went, we were going to end up hiring a lot of local production, uh, local production people and on top of that, local cast. And we just didn't know how many or what that would mean. So we went to, um, uh, started looking down here then uh, uh, for cast people and um, first uh, telly feature that we shot, Hercules, um, we got Hercules and his friend Eolus who was in the first one and killed Eolus at the, at the, at the end. And then we liked Michael Hurst so bad, I said, geez, I think we've made a terrible mistake in killing him. And I've had a huge fight with our production executive. I said, you know what, we should go back and reshoot the ending. We had worked with Lucy Lawless in an episode of Hercules that shot right before Christmas of 94, before Hercules went on the air. So we had shot like the first six or seven episodes and then the, it was going to go on the air and we would continue to shoot the order of 13 that we were doing. Right after the Hercules went on, so like the third week in January, they would have seen the first cut of, the, of Lucy being in the Hercules episode as the evil warrior princess. And the guy Dan Philly called me up and said, um, you know what, uh, uh, you've got Hercules and Vanishing Sun went on the air, they're not pairing up right, you guys should rip off your own show and make a spinoff right away. And spinoff, what's that, Dan? Well, a spinoff is you take the character and spin it out like they did on Happy Days. Went, oh, okay. And he said, so um, that, the warrior princess girl, you know, she was great in that and she's sexy and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I remember picking up the phone and saying, okay. And they're calling um, down to New Zealand. I got, Lucy was shooting like the second episode in this arc or going out and uh, said, hey, we're gonna redeem your character and there's a chance that it's gonna spin out into, um, into a, its own show. She said, what are you playing, Yank the Kiwi? Is that it? And you think it's, I said, no, we're dead serious. And she said, oh, okay, yeah, call me when it's serious. Basically by the end of March they had, of 95, they had committed to a Z, new uh, a Xena show and uh, we started hiring writers and started shooting in um, June of 95. Hercules was a television show and Xena had the um, status of being a pop icon. So it was lightning in the bottle at that time. I had always wanted to do a female heroine television show, but I could never quite figure out what it was. And I saw an Asian movie called um, uh, Swordsman 3, The East is Red, and it had a female lead who was really bad and trying to be good and I said ah that's the key but Xena came on the air as a conflicted hero of somebody who wanted to go good but had a bad past um, which is something people could relate to and no one had treated a female on screen in that fashion and then there was the social phenomena that happened at that moment as it came on the air of the internet and that that brought people together who, um, the idea of female empowerment and the person with the past and all of that was connected in the internet for the first time. The idea that Xena and Gabrielle were lovers was something that was never inherent in the show we set out to make. And over time, um, certainly not in the first season and well at the very end of the first season um, we wanted to do something but we were given very s strict instructions from the studio when we cut the opening images w this isn't a show about two women who are lesbians if you watch the early Xena we gave her five of the first episodes there was all about some guy America still is very puritanical when it comes to sex and um, sex in particular. Violence is an issue, but not as much of an issue. All the television we've shot in New Zealand, the studios and the executives and my partners and everyone has gotten happy and secure with the great cast, the great directors, but I've yet to crack the New Zealand writers. So on Hercules and Xena, by the end of both those shows, 50% of the directors were from here. Um, 
the cast were always everything but the leads and maybe one guest star every other episode or every episode two out of three episodes would, would be um, an American guest star. Um, but everyone else in it was uh, from New Zealand. Um, but the writers have never crossed over for whatever reason. When we were doing Hercules and Xena, all of the post-production was done back in the States. Um, the vis effects were done by the end of both shows were being all done here. There was kind of a transition. It started with a company in America and over time, was all done here. Then about two years ago, I was leaving on a fishing trip. My partner Sam gave me a book and um, he said, you should read this book, Rob. I think it would make a good mini series or we should do something for television with it. So I took it and it was um, Terry Goodkind's um, Sword of Truth series. And the first book was Wizard's First Rule. So I read that and really liked it. That book kind of was the genesis uh, for Legend of the Seeker. So it's um, Bought the rights, got the rights to it eventually, and was able to um, sell it back to the syndicated television network and get a partner to finance it in ABC Disney Studios. Legend of the Seeker is the st story of a young man, Richard Cipher, a uh, simple woodsman who lives in a world without magic. And one day, the borders that separate his world without magic from uh, the land on the other side of the, the boundary, a world with magic, a woman comes who has special powers and says, We need you to come and fulfill your destiny and take them away and um, and it's the classic hero's story of a young man who um, against incredible odds is out and has to destroy uh, Dark and Rawl played by Craig Parker the um, uh, the Hitler of his time and so um, it's kind of a simple tale of good versus evil set in a, a fantastical world and um, beautifully realized here in New Zealand.